Cliz. Thank oh, you, David. It was gr great to hear from him. Some real straight talk, and let's hope we can get more of that from Representative Scott Garrett. He is a Republican representative from New Jersey. Welcome back to the program. We've been speaking to you quite a bit. Uh, you just heard Jack Kemp, a Republican yeah. working for George yeah. Bush Sr., saying, get it done. What's your thought about this? Well, that's what we've been saying since day one, since Saturday, a week ago Saturday, when the president first came up with this proposal. We said, yes, we realize there is a severe problem on Wall Street that is going to impact on Main Street, and we do want to get it done. Unfortunately, from the very beginning, uh, the administration was saying it's only their way that they were going to do it. And then when the uh, Democrats got on board, they basically joined with the administration, and they supported the administration's proposal. And for, for the first several days, there was real no negotiations or discussions of many any changes. It was only in the end of the week that we got to make some of those changes around the edge. But as we were saying before, there are some fundamental changes that need to be do, done in this bill, and they reflect the opinion of the vast majority of the Americans that uh, the taxpayer should not be bailing out the um, Wall Street. Instead, Wall Street really should have the skin in the game, and I think we can accomplish that. Congressman, did it give you pause to see the market uh, tumble as it did today? Yeah, it certainly gave me pause, but um, it's its largest um, drop in one day. Someone else, I think on CNN, I heard earlier today, was talking about on the Dow, they gave it this comparison. It, they said this, they said it was um, not in the top 10 as far as percentage. So that, was, that is more the half, half empty versus the half full with some uh, analysis that I heard earlier today. And the other aspect of it is, I think you were reporting this as well earlier, surely the stock market was looking at what we were doing here in Washington. But I think the market also was reflective of what was going on in Europe as well with respect to, um, with respect to uh, the bank failures over there. So you can't, uh, you have all due respect, have to say the market looks at a whole bunch of different factors when this goes into it. Okay, they're also looking at futures overseas that give us an indication yeah. of how overseas markets will open. And it looks like a route at the moment for Japan and Australia. David and I okay. had earlier stats. Uh, Satal, can you get me new futures numbers, please, if possible, on, on Nikkei 225 for Japan, down 10 percent or so? What if, Representative, we start to see, uh, Jack Kemp said meltdown, I didn't say meltdown, um, overseas, and it, it kind of tumbles over tomorrow into our markets where we might have thinner volume due to the holidays and therefore wilder swings. Will, will that sort of add some immediacy to the plan? Well, I think there's already immediacy to the plan. I mean, it, I agree with some that said, you know, we could have stayed here. Look, we worked through the whole weekend, uh, beginning on Saturday morning and right through Sunday night. So uh, to continue on through this week should not have been that hard of a thing to do. So there is that immediacy that some of us feel. And you may raise a very good point, though, the fact that the holiday is probably going to skew the numbers a little bit. And so depending on which side of this argument you're on, you're some, some will say they're skewed this way because of what we did, and what others will say it's skewed the other way just because of its light trading in the market because of that. Uh, I'm looking at it, as I always try to do, in the more positive point of view, that uh, there are alternatives out there, that maybe the administration didn't want to ever consider them, but now they should consider them, and the Democrat majority should also be willing to consider them as well. These are plans and ideas that economists around the country have said, yeah, these can work, and maybe they can work a little bit better than what Paulson suggested. Let's look at them now. I got to ask a final question. I've been asking yeah. everybody, mark to market, if they if they force that in the bill, if they force the hand yeah. of the SEC to get rid of mark to market, would you vote in favor of it? No, I would support that. I mean, we've heard so much testimony about that and experts about that to say that that would be one step in the right direction. All right, but not the decisive one. I think it goes a real long way. I heard uh, Chris Chase, Chase just on making a very good point about what was in the 80s and had we had mark to market then, you would have had a disaster back then. Exactly. We're seeing that disaster right. occur today. Congress, because of it, Congressman Mark, Mark, Scott Garrett, you got some busy hours ahead. I'll leave you be. Days. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Let's go back to our you. Bulls and Bears panel. And of course, there was. brought in Eric Bowling to talk about exactly what's going on with commodities, where people put their money in a market like this. Clearly, they're going to gold, Eric. And that's about the only commodity. Uh, clear, uh, oil down a little.